Welcome to My View On, a series of podcasts where experts in the industry give their personal view on some of the big topics making waves in the media. All of the views are the experts' own, providing a fresh look at the key issues facing the financial industry. Now, there are a slew of changes on the cards for tapered annual and lifetime allowances. So, what can you do and what do you need to know? To discuss this, I'm joined by Paul Spate from James Hay. Welcome, Paul. Um, so, first off, What's happening? Well, John, I, I just can't explain how um, complicated the um, the Chancellor's now made saving for retirement. And we have uh, a whole raft of new changes that are coming in, both in terms of limiting the size that your pension fund can grow to, but also where you can um, and how much you can save into different savings pots. So the uh, the headline as that's been, um, been grabbing at the moment is the fact that the lifetime allowance, the amount, the total amount you can save into pensions is coming from 1.25 down to a million pounds. But at the same time, you'll also see that there's a lot of noise about how much um, tax relief is given away to individuals. Um, it's long been you know, considered the low-hanging fruit in, um, in Whitehall. And there are various moves afoot and, and some of the most complicated legislation that um, I think uh, most accountants have seen has been introduced by the Chancellor to, uh, to limit particularly high earners and how much they can claim. Um, while that's been going on, sort of affecting, if you like, the, uh, the, the wealthy savers in our country, we've also had a desire from, from the Chancellor to lift you know, hard-working families out of tax altogether. So at the same time, we've got a whole raft of um, different allowances that are coming in. So you have a, an increased personal allowance going up to £11,000. There's a savings tax allowance of £1,000. There's your first £5,000 of savings income. At not, you know, the, you get the gist. It's starting to get there are lots and lots of different allowances that are coming in that individuals could take advantage of. But that said, there's a potential tax trap at the other end for people who've um, accumulated significant savings or indeed um, are paying significant sums into their pension funds at the moment. So it sounds like a very confusing landscape that you've described there, Paul. Why is it so confusing? Well, I think, you know, it's it's interesting that the Gordon Brown, the Labour um, Chancellor, brought in a lifetime allowance that raised from 1.5 up to 1.8 million, and now we have a Conservative Chancellor who's brought that right back down to a million pounds. And why is it so confusing? Well, because you've got a bit of a push and a pull going on in the tax situation in terms of, as I say, what he wants to do at the lower end to lift people out of tax and and then acknowledging that there's been... If you consider taxation to be progressive, the more that you earn, the more you pay, tax relief and, and the way that we um, we operate pensions in the UK is probably regressive. So the, the more you, you earn, the more tax relief you actually get. And that situation he's looking to um, to reverse or certainly change so that it's a fairer system. Um, but meantime, we have individuals who are going to face some fairly substantial tax penalties. And the, the question that um, we've been wrestling with is for many of these people, they won't know until it's too late that they've incurred these costs. So you can keep an eye on how far your pension fund is growing, whether it's going to get to a million pounds. Whether you can do anything about that is another matter. But if you are um, looking to pay money into your pension fund, the new legislation is brought in is affecting people who've earned over 110 and then over 150,000 and has introduced two different types of um, definition of income for people to, to navigate through. But for most high earners, they won't necessarily know how much they've earned until after the end of the tax year when the accountant does their accounts. So what we're saying is to advisors and to their accountants, you, you're going to need to understand what these new rules mean and it may mean that people can't pay in the £40,000 that they've been used to, they may only be able to pay in £10,000 and then make make provision later on. So this is all sounding pretty bleak, Paul. What can people do? Well, this is this is the, if you like, the million dollar, million dollar question. Um, because the, the, the sort of, the you know, the genie's out of the bottle in terms of what you can do with your pension fund. So at retirement now, the, you know, the Chancellor stood up last March and said, right, you no longer have to buy an annuity and there's no restrictions on the amount of money that you can draw out of your pension fund. Fantastic. That changed the dynamic of how you, we save for retirement in the UK because suddenly it got exciting to have a pension again. But on the other flip side, what we've got now is a restriction that's looking to claw back tax from large pension schemes and large pension funds. So people really need to engage so probably with an advisor more so than ever before. And those advisors are also going to want to engage with the accountants because the simple definitions of income to decide whether someone's caught by these tax traps are probably too complicated and the 
information that the advisor would need to know will probably be held by the accountant and not something they'd traditionally have discussed with their client. Final thoughts, Paul. Um, Many of these changes that you're referring to, this more complex environment that you're describing, Mm. have um, arrived precisely because of government changes to the pensions landscape, pensions freedom in particular. Mm. Um, Isn't there something here that the government should be doing to make that environment more simple and easier to understand for for people out there looking to save for retirement? Well, uh, certainly from the consultation documents that um, we've participated in, I think there is a general move that they'd like to simplify the pension schemes and the way that tax relief in particular is given. Um, you know, this idea of a contrib- flat rate contribution may well solve many of this. But the what's interesting and, and what's a very positive thing in, in, in my view is because um, retirees now don't have a typical, you know, don't have a line in the sand where they then retire, they'll, they'll phase it over a number of years. And they'll have probably saved into a number of different savings pots as well. So there'll be an ISA, a general investment account, a savings account and the pension. In traditional retirement planning pre-freedoms, you know, a client would have had a, a pension scheme, they retire, they draw a fixed income for the rest of their lives. Now you can turn income on and off from different sources and you can take a lump from the pension scheme in one year, maybe draw down from your ISA in another. You could actually, with careful planning with an advisor, make use of all these new allowances where previously you never would have been able to. I mean, we've done some numbers that show that if you've got money in the right pots, you could quite easily draw even up to £70,000 a year without paying tax at all. So there's some very positive outcomes from what's going on here, but I think it will need some some careful advice work with your advisor to make the most of them. Okay, Paul, thank you very much indeed.